Hi there and welcome to this day in history for April 24th. April 24th is the 114th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 115th in leap years with 251 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is chronology. Chronology is a noun that means the science that deals with the measuring of time and that assigns events to proper dates. A chronological table, list, or account. An arrangement as of events in order of occurrence. For example, a chronology of events leading up to the war between the states, or the detectives constructed a chronology of the crime. This word comes to us from Latin, words that mean time and study. Chronology is a study of time. First known use of the word chronology is 1585 chronology. And with that, this item caught my eye for today. 1479 B.C., Thutmose III ascends to the throne of Egypt, although power effectively shifts to Hatshepsut according to the low chronology of the 18th dynasty. First of all, when I saw that, I thought, are they talking about the guy we know as King Tut? No, this is a different guy. We'll get into that. Secondly, holy cow, 1479 B.C., that was a long time ago. 3,501 years ago, as I read this in 2022. So what does this mean? Thutmose the third ascends to the throne of Egypt, although power effectively shifts to Hatshepsut, according to the low chronology of the 18th dynasty. Well, let's take it apart. First, let's look at that low chronology thing. Apparently, there are several chronologies, like this happened and this happened and this happened. Oh no, this happened and this happened and this happened. Given that we are currently so long after some of that Egyptian history, we're trying to piece together clues about them, that time, who people were, what they did, and what happened. It's my understanding that most of this is done by trying to decipher things like hieroglyphics painted on walls and inscribed on buildings and monuments. It's like finding a strange, unfamiliar object in your yard or in an old barn and trying to figure out what in the world is this? <laughs> what was it used for? What was its use? So long after the fact, thousands of years later, in the case of Egyptology, some things seem self-evident and other things we just have to guess, try to piece together. It's also that way with ancient Mesopotamian artifacts, inscriptions, cuneiform writing, made perfect sense to them. <laughs> we think we're so modern and smart, but thousands of years ago, people were building amazing architecture, making art, keeping written records. Kind of makes me think, what if the Statue of Liberty is still standing two or three thousand years from now? What will archaeologists figure out about that? They might think, oh, in that time, this was some important goddess, especially if they come across some of the many depictions we have of her in visual art and figurines. Archaeologists in the far future might think we worship this lady with the book and the torch. Try to guess what she meant to us, <laughs> possibly writing a new mythology. But I digress. We're talking about Thutmose III and the low chronology of the 18th dynasty. Thutmose is an ancient Egyptian personal name that means born of the god Thoth. Several royals of ancient Egypt were named Thutmose, and we see that name in use from Thutmose I, who ruled from sometime in the 1500s BC to 1490 BC, through Thutmose IV, who died sometime in the 1300s BC. In addition, there were royal officials and at least one artist with the name of Thutmose. That beautiful bust of Nefertiti is believed to have been sculpted by an artist named Thutmose, for example, sometime in the 1350s BC. Back to Thutmose III, though. He lived, or as the reference I found says, he flourished 
from 1479 to 1425 BC. Now, I know that whole BC thing can be confusing, but remember that BC is before, and so it counts from the bigger numbers down to zero, and then we go from the modern times, we count up. So, according to the low chronology of Egypt, Thutmose III flourished from 1749 to 1425, he was known as the Conqueror, or the Great, and was the sixth Pharaoh. According to the artifacts and records they have been able to piece together, Thutmose III became king, or Pharaoh, at the age of two. So that part where it says, although power effectively shifts to Hatshepsut, <laughs> that's because Hatshepsut acted as regent until he was old enough to rule on his own. And we've talked about this sort of thing before. He did become the sole ruler when Hatshepsut died, which was in 1458 BC. So the III will have been 23 years old at that time. And he ruled until his death at the age of 56. Well, that was quite the rabbit hole. And goodness, there's so much more about the III and the 18th dynasty. But I think we're going to let it, we're going to let that be it for right now. And that's all I have right now. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with the link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that includes these videos, and I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that will also have those links. My blog is called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Getter. All those links in the description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and all. See you next time.